Is it possible to create shadows from gradients instead of solid colors on a transparent background? Hmm, let's find out. But wait, let's start with a solution that works for about 80% of cases. So, we have this element with a light blue background, and we want to add a cool gradient shadow to it. Here's what we can do. We'll define the gradient in that pseudo element and place it behind the actual element. Then, we'll apply a blur filter to it and we use transform translate to control the X and Y offsets. This solution is pretty good, but it has one little drawback with the Z index minus one declaration. Yeah, there's something called stacking context going on there. What if we apply a transform to the main element? Oh no, the shadow is no longer below the element. This results because of a stacking context. Leave a comment if you want to know more about it. Instead of using Z index minus one, We'll use a negative translation along the z-axis. We'll put everything inside Translate 3D. Just remember to use Transform Style Preserve 3D on the main element for the 3D effect to work. Now, let's remove the background and put white border on the main element and set the offsets to zero. The idea is to figure out a way to make everything inside the element disappear, but still keep everything outside visible. Well, there's no direct way to do that, but we can simulate it using a special pattern called a polygon. And voila, we have a gradient shadow that supports transparency. Okay, and how does it work? The visible part, shown in blue, is what remains after applying the clip path. I'm using the blue color just to explain the concept. Take a look at the four points marked with a big value. Let's call it B. I chose 100 Vmax for my big value but you can use any large value you want. The whole point is to make sure we have ample space for the shadow. Additionally, we have four points that correspond to the corners of the pseudo element. We start from minus B minus B and continue until we reach zero zero. In total, we need 10 points for this polygon. It's not eight points because two points minus B minus B and zero zero are repeated in the path. This is what happens when we define the spread. The clip path cuts more than we need it to. Remember, we always need to cut the part inside the main element. We need to adjust the position of the four points inside of clip path. We've set up this variable called S for the spread distance and then made some changes to the polygon points. We only adjusted the points that determine the pseudo elements corners. Basically, we increased all those zero values by the S variable and decreased the 100% values by the same S. Let's see them side by side. Cool right? It's basically the same deal with the offsets. Once we shift around the pseudo element using that translate trick, the shadow might go a bit wonky and not line up right. So what do we do? Yep, you guessed it. We need to fix up that polygon once again, using these two new variables X and Y. We use them inside of transform and we also update the clip path values. We still don't touch the polygon points with big values. We reduce X from the X coordinates and Y from the Y coordinates. Okay, okay, now we done, right? Yep, if you don't want to add a border radius. So, for this, we will introduce the mask property to the mix. And to keep things smooth and avoid any possible clashes, let's start by adding an extra element for the sake of simple code. The first step is to position the S element and purposely create an overflow and use a combination of border and inset to define that area. Okay, but what is going on here? First off all, we define those new variables, R for radius and W for width. For the box element, we only replace the fixed values with the variables. In the custom element, the inset uses the calc function to calculate the negative value of W and applies it to all four sides of the S element. The border just uses the W variable instead of a fixed value, so it always matches the width of the element. The border radius uses the calc function to calculate the sum of W and R variables to determine the border radius. Since R is set to 0M, this effectively sets the border radius to 22M, matching the width of the element. Next, we reuse the code from the previous pseudo element for the pseudo element of S, but using variables instead of static values. For the moment, we have a gradient shadow without the transparency feature. The last step of this trick is to define the mask and not forgetting to remove the background color and outline. It's done. We have our gradient shadow and it supports border radius. Thanks for watching and don't forget to watch the video that will appear here.